This is my lithium iron uh, 18650 battery pack, which is charged from a lead acid PWM solar charge controller, uh, a standard PWM lead acid solar charge controller that I've done nothing to. Uh, there's very little actually you can do with this one, apart from change the battery type from gel to flooded to sealed. And it is in gel mode, and I've done a previous video all about this, which I'll link to up here. But this has been running pretty well, and as you can see at the moment, these seven 18650s are sat at about 26.3 volts, and that's roughly 3.7 volts for each cell, their sort of nominal value. But as you can see here, the state of charge meter says they're a bit low, they haven't fully charged again from last night's uh, draw. But a few days ago here in England, we had a bit of snow in the north of England anyway. And uh, that covered the panels that power this solar charge controller for most of the day. And it didn't melt away, sadly. And I was at work and unable to clear them. And at that point, I found that two nights of running my uh, LED lights on the outside of the shed from these 18650s is a bit much and uh, they struggle to cope. These are only uh, 2000 milliamp hour cells, two amp hours each, and they were unable to cope with two nights of those LEDs. Um, or whether it's the cold weather we're getting now that's making these a little less happy. Either way, I think it's time for an expansion. But despite the recent snow, I've actually been planning for this for a little while, and over the last few weeks, I've been recycling some 18650s. And here's my box of 18650s, and every single one has been tested and uh, for internal resistance and capacity, 2,544 milliamp hours there on this Samsung cell. And uh, I think I've done quite well out of the uh, 15 or so laptop batteries I've uh, prized open uh, because I've got 60 good cells here that have been sat for a few weeks and uh, as long as they keep up their voltage now I'm going to start using them. Now I have to say for the majority of my battery testing I've been using this, the Lytocala Engineer Lee 300 and uh, there's a very good reason for it. Uh, first of all it powers off my lead acid system here, 12 volts on the input. And uh, secondly, the discharge function in here is really rather useful because it charges the cells up to 4.2 volts, discharges them and shows you the uh, rating and then charges them back up again. And it does that automatically. So the battery gets two charges and one discharge all automatically and I just pop back into the shed and read off the number. So that means I've been able to put two cells in here on the morning, go to work, come back and they're all finished and then do the same overnight. Now of course I'm not the only one recycling 18650s out there on YouTube. There's lots of interesting channels if this is something you're interested in. Uh, may I recommend HB Powerwall who's got a very large installation of uh, 18650s. Um, Nerdville who's got an awful lot of batteries to process but we're yet to see what he's going to do with these cells. But perhaps the most interesting channel for me is a guy called Paul Kennett and I'll definitely link to all those channels below. But Paul has some different ideas about using the 18650s. He's doing it on a smaller scale, I guess like I am, and he's trying to do it in various different ways, and I found that really interesting, so thank you, Paul. One of the interesting things that Paul has done, that I don't think anybody else has done, is he's left the cells attached in their pairs, because usually in laptop batteries, cells are paired together, spot welded with nickel strip, and then used. And the theory is that those two batteries were created at the same time, sent in the same delivery to the battery manufacturer, spot welded together, and their whole life they've been charged and discharged together, and actually they should have almost identical characteristics. And the other advantage is when they're spot welded in pairs, is you can actually double your capacity by piggybacking the two in the battery holder. So if I ever get another batch of batteries, 
potentially I can use them um, and keep them in pairs and again double my capacity once more. Now I have made a plan for this, uh, as you can see the seven battery holders here uh, with the positive end up here and the negative end down at this end. A bit of bus bar there connecting the positive of what cell 4 to the negative of cell 5. A capacity checker here is going to display the voltage of each cell um, or group of cells should I say. The positive is going to have an inline fuse going to the ViewStar PWM solar charge controller which will be up there somewhere, a DC to DC converter and then perhaps a timer for the outside lights or a little bit of space for some other components. So that's the plan and this is an A3 piece of paper so it's all going to fit on uh, one single A3 sized piece of wood. So I've got a bit of work to do on these battery uh, holders here. Um, first of all, those pins are protruding below the edge and when I mount this onto a piece of board, that's going to be a problem. So I will just bend these up into that gap um, and then they're out of the way. I'm also going to insulate each end uh, with some insulating tape because I don't want these pins, bent pins here, to uh, connect with the other battery um, holder here which is going to butt right up to the edge because I need to use a different method to interconnect each group of cells. And on the negative end here I'm going to put a piece of nickel strip across the back commoning all these uh, points together, all the negatives of each cell. And uh, I'll get the Dremel and cut a small slit there so that that nickel strip can also come out of the end because that's the method I'm going to use, that's the point, the midpoint between two batteries that I'm going to use to uh, for the capacity checker so it can keep an eye on all the voltages. And with all seven battery holders now insulated at the end as well with some tape so they definitely definitely can't touch each other, I think it's time to attach them to this board. Now before I put these last rivets in here I have realised that I'm going to need to put my bus bar in underneath these tabs before I do the riveting because uh, I don't think I'll get them in afterwards so I need to think about the bus bar a bit more and I have bought this copper strip uh, and I believe it is pure copper uh, it's about half a mil thick I think and I've got 30 centimeter um, lengths, one centimetre wide and perhaps I'll try that. I am a little bit worried about soldering to this but uh, hopefully with enough heat I should be able to get a good contact. And it may not well be the prettiest solder job but they are making good contact and uh, it wasn't as difficult as I expected. So I've now got some uh, nickel strip. It was sold as pure nickel, but it was also sold as nickel plate. So uh, I'm suspecting it's the latter. And uh, that can go down there behind all those connectors there. And with the pressure of the cells in there, that should make a reasonable contact. And then I've got a place to uh, attach my... Uh, voltage sense wire. Now I keep on talking about my voltage sense here and of course what I really mean is a balanced charging cable but of course as a rule I won't be doing any balanced charging on this uh, setup. I'm hopefully going to leave it to do its own thing. Uh, but I have used a standard 7S balance cable here and I've extended each wire with the same colour I think in each instance so that they're all exactly the same length any voltage drop although there shouldn't really be will be the same over each one and obviously I needed to get it all the way to the end of this setup here um, so I could plug in the uh, capacity checker and if I really needed to uh, my uh, 8S uh, balance charger. So the nickel bus bars there the uh, commoning nickel has been uh, soldered onto the wires and uh, put a bit of heat shrink on the end uh, the idea being so that uh, when it's behind there I don't think that's the right wire for this connector but it'll do when it comes out the end there it's insulated because there's going to be another one coming out here so uh, we need to make sure they don't touch obviously 
and there's a couple of wires left the uh, the main positive the main negative and uh, is it the yellow wire yeah so that one's going to actually just attach straight to the copper bus bar up here and the positive and negative points on this balance cable uh, will go to the copper bus bar at the most positive and negative points of my 7S pack. But I still haven't answered the question yet how I'm going to uh, attach the positive of each cell to the negative of the next cell. Well, I'm going to use some uh, household 5 amp uh, fuse wire to start with at least. I think that'll be fine. I'm going to try and solder it from this contact point here to the one on the other side so the fuse will go over and I'll be able to see if it's blown because of course the issue is if one of these cells goes wrong, if it goes short circuit each of the other cells will try and deliver current into it and hopefully then I'll stop that happening by the fuse blowing because three 18650s will each be able to provide a few amps and uh, Hopefully that will blow a 5 amp fuse. This is all a bit of trial and error, but uh, for the moment, 5 amp fuse wire it is. So I've soldered uh, four fuses to this side of the connections, and uh, I've realised that's actually really hard to see. And Paul Kennett had another good suggestion. A bit of white tape behind them should make them easier to see, and easier to check if they've blown or not. And assuming it passes the uh, continuity test, I don't think that's too bad. So you can see I've completed all the fuses now between the different groups of cells. And uh, oh, I've also done the ones to the bus bar here at the positive end and uh, at the midpoint as well. And this balance cable, I've done the final couple of connections for that as well. It was much easier to do all of that at once when the iron's hot and all the metal work's hot and that sort of thing. Uh, much more progress doing it all in one batch. And there it is, the hardware done pretty much. Um, it only just fits on my bench, doesn't it? But uh, the main power positive and negatives are connected here. So we're going negative to positive all the way through. The capacity controller is set up ready to uh, keep an eye on the voltages of all the different groups of cells but now I need to think about my groups and I need to work out which batteries are going to go together best to make the best balanced pack and for that I'm going to use repacker.com R-E-P-A-C-K-R.com and you just drop in a CSV of all the milliamp hours of all your batteries you say how many batteries you want in series how many in parallel and uh, there's a couple of options here for arranging um, them in slightly different ways and it comes up with the results and I've already done this so I've already copied this information across to a spreadsheet here and as you can see uh, this first option is probably the one I'm going to go for the capacity of each group is 9912 milliamp hours and uh, there's just 9911, 9910 and then more 11 so actually on average the pack is uh, 9911.1 milliamp hours per group uh, and I think that's pretty good for recycled batteries. So now it's just a matter of cross-referencing the numbers here against the cells in my box and oh, this one's a little bit damaged but 2000 498 milliamp hours well that's in there there's one there in pack three so one two three uh, negative positive excellent so as you can see here on the uh, capacity controller we've got 26.7 that's 3.8 3.8 3.8 3.8, 3.8, oh, just shy of 3.8 there on the last set. 26.7 volts across all the different groups. So I'm going to let this sit in the sun tomorrow and uh, charge up fully. Um, this solar charge controller should charge each group up to about 4 volts, given the right amount of sun, of course. And I think that'll probably do for this video. Um, that is all to say, 
but thank you to those who've inspired me to give this a go, um, particularly Paul Kennett, because I do like his idea here for the battery holders and the fusing in between and all that sort of thing, and uh, much of those ideas have come from him. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.